So what that means is that you need to have your story pitch perfect. And to do that, you need to think about these three steps. Create a story that already answers the questions, what are you doing or making, and why does it matter? Tell that story on multiple channels already, not just in a release, but in a blog, a video, a modern release where it can be found in search. And I'll go back to what Casey was saying earlier. It's really important that you are thinking about where you're driving people to. You're, in most cases, driving people to your landing page. So those press releases have to speak as if you're leading them to that landing page. Uh, mash up PR and marketing and sales. Bring them into the mix so that your efforts in PR and comms are reaching the right audience at the right place at the right time, uh, whether it's on web, email, newsletter, or even a speaking event. So you really have to change the way that you engage with each other in a company, in a startup, and you also have to change the way you see the media. The media is not what you see on TV anymore not the CNN live shot or that planned coverage, right? So I put in there, stop the press release spamming, because that is a very, very quick way to say, yeah, I'm doing PR. But it's not necessarily the best way to be doing it. You've got to stop thinking the old way and start thinking the new way. The new way basically meaning we as a company have to produce our own news in some cases. We have to engage in real-time news. We called it newsjacking. We have to be part of these news cycles, and not just when we wake up in the morning, but where the sun is rising all over the world. And then we also have to understand that journalists are not just about top-tier New York Times. These are the bloggers. These are the influencers, potential employees. So you have to treat everyone equally and not in some sort of crazy hierarchy because you can have a New York Times reporter with 50 followers, and then you can have a mommy blogger who has millions of followers. After you have your pitch and your story, you need to start acting like a newsroom. Create content with the audience in mind. And as a founder or as a person who's running in a startup, you're kind of in a, in a fishbowl. You think you know what your story is and what your product is doing because you're in that world. You have to start talking to your neighbors, your parents, your friends, and asking them what they think your product or service is and how it applies to their lives. So prioritize and plan your content pegged to the headlines. That basically means creating an editorial calendar. It means knowing, if you're in e-tail, that there's Black Friday coming up, or knowing that uh, after Black Friday there's going to be reports on cyber hacking or cybersecurity at the point of sale, right? So have your story pitches ready for what you know might hit in the headlines. So those daily beat checks happen early in the morning, 6 a.m. East Coast time, and they stay all the way through UK, EMEA, uh, Asia, and Latin America. You want to make sure your company is always aware of those headlines hitting at any given time of the day and produce that news you can use. Now, this is a content, Casey, that you kind of referred to a little about that thought leadership, the really rich content that drives people to want to know more. That type of content as a company, if you're producing that, then you can warrant inviting someone into your landing page, right? Invite them in to actually come to a fun party um, and don't trick. They'll come once and they'll never come back. Um, master the art of the cold open. And basically what a cold open in the news is when you hear the announcer saying, coming up in five minutes, the air you breathe can kill you. We'll tell you why, right? It's that thing that snags you to say, what, what? You know, I'm doing that or I need that. And so if you're p pitching a product or a service, you need to come out in a cold open, which is usually the first eight seconds of your pitch, whether it's a release, a video, or announcement, on why. Let me just take a quick moment to thank Scott Ed Walker and the Walker Corporate Law Group for supporting this week in startups. The Walker Corporate Law Group is a boutique law firm specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs and startups, and I've personally known Scott for a long time, and a lot of my uh, angel investments use him as their attorney and speak incredibly highly of him. Uh, the Walker Corporate Law Group encourages fixed fees, which they believe um, really helps startups, and I know it does, because you don't get that surprise when you get your bill every month. Um, and they believe, actually, at the Walker Corporate Law Group that billable hours reward inefficiency. They want to get things done, and they want to get it done quickly and efficiently for you, keep those billable hours actually reasonable so that you can grow your startup and put the capital where it belongs in the product. All of their lawyers have decades of experience. There's no junior associates getting on the job training, and they provide tons of services, including M&A, licensing agreements, terms of services, and privacy policies. If you want to talk to the founder himself, Scott Ed Walker, you can call him directly at 415-979-9998.
That's 415-979-9998, 979-9998, where you can email him directly, Scott at Walker Corporate Law. Scott at Walker Corporate Law, and you just put in the subject line, Jason sent me. And you can visit walkercorporatelaw.com, and you can follow Scott at Scott Ed Walker uh, on the Twitter. Thanks, Scott, for supporting independent media like This Week in Startups. 